Hey folks, here at OS Reviews. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the camera application and the supporting apps uh, that allow you to edit your photos from the Nokia Lumia 1520. This is a feature that we really wanted to spend a bit more time on and we didn't get to cover in our previous reviews as well as overviews of Windows 10 and that running on this phone. So a bit of a refresher, the 1520 has a Nokia PureView camera that has a 20 megapixel autofocus enabled sensor with dual LED flash, which makes it for a very impressive of, you know, pixel resolution count um, has a rather large sensor as well, which captures a fair amount of light, and more importantly, gives you access to a manual selection of uh, modes for you to tweak your uh, various exposure levels, your saturation levels, and things that are found in more professional cameras. Uh, but of course, on a smartphone, it's not going to be as impressive as the 40 megapixel uh, welding Nokia PureView 808. But nonetheless, it uses the same technology and comes in a more accessible and modern platform and a phone also that has slightly better components and internals than the older 808. So taking a quick look at the camera app first, if we can kind of launch into that just by tapping on the shutter key for a few seconds. It makes it extremely easy to take images quickly and shutter speed here uh, is extremely rapid and fast. I just tap on once to focus and then the image you know is, is captured. So no issues there. It captures it in a split second. And in terms of settings, it's very uh, similar to what we've been seeing from uh, older Nokia phones for a while now. It gives you really fine tuning abilities. So you can see here I have quick launch shortcuts to turn the flash on or off. I can also ch change things like self timers, white balance, uh, in addition to ISO, autofocus if I want to have it at a fixed focus or manually select that, and uh, brightness controls as well. So I can hide this bar or make it a little bit larger. Uh, right now I'm in my pro mode for instance, and that brings up this bar which allows me to adjust these things a bit more easily. So exiting out of that, I can tap on settings over here for a larger list of uh, what I want to tweak, for instance. So there's things on here for uh, pressing and holding the camera button will automatically, let's say, take a photo burst, so a series of images as opposed to just one, or start recording video as opposed to clicking on once to take a picture. I can click and uh, view it lenses, which are some other filters that uh, Microsoft has been rolling out, change the aspect ratio, turn on a framing grid for better alignment of photos, change the resolution, uh, and you know having the ability to store a DNG or a raw photo as well for better editing when I'm putting my photos off onto a computer. So changing the aspect ratio perhaps to eight to three, of course, also changes the resolution here. So you can see now I'm up to pretty much 20 megapixels uh, if I'm using 4x3 as opposed to 16x9, which is wider and captures the entire frame of the phone's display. And for videos, I have things such as the resolution count. You can see it goes all the way up here uh, to a pretty impressive uh, 3840 by 2160 at 30 frames per second. So it does capture a very good video um, as well. And there's also digital video stabilization that can be turned on or off. Unfortunately, it's not optical, so it's not going to be as stable as you would find on some newer smartphones, but it still makes for a good video recording experience. So taking a brief detour, I guess, and talking about just the video experience, um, it's a good video capture just because the sensor on board for the camera is very good. It has a series of microphones, some located on the front, some located on the back, for you to capture scenes uh, both where you have to talk and also where there's ambient background sound. There's a bit of uh, noise cancellation as well, so it does make for a good video experience with smooth frame rates. The only uh, downside is in the case where you have to consistent, consistently uh, move around, the videos can get a bit more shaky and of course without that optical image stabilization function on board. Otherwise, I can change the you know the positioning of the camera to the front facing one from the back. Uh, in addition, if I want some more minute uh, ways to change up you know the shutter speed, uh, otherwise on the side there's also toggles to go back and forth between your video, your images, and also a panorama view, although by default it seems to be in this vertical orientation, you kind of have to switch it up if you want to capture a longer kind of landscape shot there. But if I go back to the camera here to get the pro mode for all of the adjustments seen at once, I slide this camera to the side there, and I have again this bar that shows me all of my settings from you know ISO to you know the brightness controls to your focus controls, infinity, which is just fixed focus, manual focus, and also the brightness controls, whether I'm indoors, cloudy day, under sunlight, so on and so forth. Everything can be finely tweaked and adjusted. So even though this thing doesn't have a depth sensor on board in the sense that uh, uh, the Nokia, the, the HTC One M8, uh, the One M9, and you know some Huawei phones might have. 
So that's the interface. Now let's talk about some of the quality as well as the images that you might want to see from a few samples that I took. Um, you can see that this is an indoor shot without the flash turned on and it does reasonably well when there's complex shades of uh, brightness going on from the light to the ambient uh, kind of lighting in the background to the image itself. So it captures that in a fair amount of detail. If I zoom all the way in, you can see even the canvas of this painting. So really is impressive and one of the benefits of having such a large megapixel count is you know giving a lot of fine detail where even if you crop into your images um, it's not going to lose too much fine detail so that's one of the good purposes since obviously smartphones don't have optical zooms and that would make the phone a lot more bulky so taking a look at some other images on here if I want to quickly slide through and find something. Uh, I can look at some more macro shots, perhaps with food, and that gives you a better detail of uh, what your images are like. It's quite vibrant, it's very saturated and uh, colorful looking images. Um, in terms of getting accuracy right, you have to adjust that a little bit more, but for the most part, you know, really your details are here, um, and it makes for a very, very, very vivid experience. It's definitely good enough to be a replacement for most point-and-shoot digital cameras that people hold around, um, so it's certainly good enough for that, but uh, for more professional settings, obviously there's still uh, some adjustments to be made. Uh, with that being said, it really is a strong showing here from Nokia. Um, other images I want to take a quick look at. Again, some images and close-ups of food. You can zoom in and see kind of the colors as well as uh, how those reflect the actual uh, images that you should be seeing. And finally, a more landscape shot. So this is under a gray, uh, kind of foggy day. You can kind of see the images here still reflect a nice amount of light and uh, still captures a fair amount of detail. The focus here is uh, perhaps set at some nearby trees and houses in the distance, but nonetheless, you can see that images are still pretty sharp and crisp, even if I zoom all the way in. So. All in all, pretty good. This is a panorama shot that I captured using that more vertical orientation that uh, captures your image in a bit more detail if I want to scroll all the way to the sides there. And uh, finally, if I look at some other images, perhaps of uh, close-up shots, I can take a look at how it fares, uh, maybe with food for instance. So this is what that would look like again. But one of the downsides of this camera I have found is under very low light environments. Complete low light, it definitely struggles more with a lot more a loss of uh, fine detail and it gets a bit blurry as well. So you can see that if I zoom all the in, the lights here are definitely a lot more distorted and there's a lot more pixelation going on. So under complete low light, uh, you know, the 1520 still isn't good enough to hold up against, uh, let's say, a more expensive regular point and shoot camera. But Otherwise, it does work very, very well for all the images as long as you have a bit of ambient background light and the built-in light in terms of the flash does a reasonable job as well. It uh, captures good shots, doesn't seem to overexpose your images too much unless you're super close to your, to your shots. And uh, that seems to be a general trend that you'll notice along with your images. And uh, the nice thing about this camera as well is if you capture it through HDR mode, allows you to retouch the lighting effects after you've taken your image so that you can play around with things like filtering as well as the focusing settings and the brightness uh, post image through several, uh, several software tools that Nokia and Microsoft has rolled out, uh, which really brings your images to life, uh, so to speak. So this is one example of that where I blurred out the background and only highlighted this one building here for a more artistic shot, as well as a filter to get a more colder tone. So you can really see that images do look quite impressive, despite the fact that this phone does not have a depth sensing camera for capturing that by default. So again, some sample images of what you can achieve with a bit more of filtering on board. So talking about filtering, we can take a quick look at some of those applications associated with those photo apps just by tapping on here. So I can cha change things like edit um, and you have access to a few of the tools I was talking about. One of that is the Lumia Creative Studio, which I added some of the filters from. Another one is a more simple crop, rotate, auto enhance that's built in by just Microsoft. And that's the one that you might use for more light photo editing that's a bit quicker. This one here is a bit, gives you a bit more settings. It's from Nokia, so you can see that I can change things like the color, red eye, I can blur the background. Um, I can also enhance various color elements such as uh, adding a brighter saturation or changing the color temperature of my images as well as playing around with the filters that gives it a more colder or brighter sheen. And finally, I can also crop it and adjust it 
uh, to the way that I want it to look. So a lot of adjustments can be made. It also saves it as a secondary copy so you don't lose the first as well and can still share it with family and friends. And again, it's quite an impressive camera just because uh, high you know, meg megapixel count in addition to a great sensor uh, that captures a large amount of light uh, gives you a lot of details to work with. So even if you edit your images afterwards, it still looks quite good. So that's the overall I would say the image quality performance of the 1520. Is it as good as the 808? I would say not quite, um, just because, again, it's not as focused on only being a good camera phone, but this smartphone is more of an all-in-one device that's also a phablet, um, also a very modern Windows phone in that sense for productivity and for you know running more apps and browsing the web. But certainly the camera here is a highlight. So anyways, guys, this has been a more in-depth look at just the camera application and related camera apps on the 1520. Hopefully you guys found this video informative and helpful. So thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.